I was a kid in the 60s, right? And um, he was this black guy, man, talking so brash. I mean, he's, he's talking to people, man, <laughs> like he was somebody. And that was appealing to me. The brashness didn't bother me. I, I, was, I was okay with that, the predicting the rounds, I am the greatest, all that. I, I was cool with all that. But he said something one time that had an effect on me as a teenager. He said, I said I was the greatest before I was the greatest. That simple line. You know, man, because I, 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 I try to remember how to simply say stuff. Because that's what connect with people. You know, man, I, you know, if you ever go see a, you ever go see a comedian that uses big words, you need a thesaurus. Hey, man, I came in here to laugh. I didn't really come in here to figure nothing out. You know, I, I throw the ball over the plate, let me hit it. Don't, I don't like curveballs when I'm at a comedy club. I want to be intellectual. I'm country dude. I love hard, hard laughing, man. That's what people want. I don't want people chuckling, snickering. I want people blowing stuff out of their mouth. Chips, nachos, <laughs> chicken wings. I like to see it all. And so I, I like basic stuff. So when he said I, said, I said I was the greatest before I was the greatest, that was the first thing that entered in my mind that you have to profess and say with your mouth what you want to have into existence. That was the first time. And then he was the first person as a young boy, now you gotta look, man. I'm in the hood, we got nothing. I done went to school and told everybody in 1969, I'm gonna be on TV one day. Okay, what? Cause you know, the assignment was, everybody write on a piece of paper what you wanna be when you grow up. I wrote, I wanna be on TV. I heard Muhammad Ali say he was the greatest. What? But I said I was the greatest before I was the greatest. I am the greatest. And he said all of this stuff in the 60s, man. So I'm drinking this stuff. So I wrote on my paper, I want to be on TV. But she went through the whole class and she saved me for last. And she said, little Stevie, come to the front. And I went to the front of the class and I went, wow. My answer must have been the best answer of everybody's in the class because she saved me for last. I used to wear my brother's clothes, hand-me-downs and stuff, man. I walk up to the class, and I had a severe stuttering problem, man. I stuttered really, really badly, right? And I'm, uh, But she called me up to the front. I got to go, you know, this is how you did back in the day, right? So she looked at me, and she said, why would you write something like this on your paper? I want to be on TV. And I'm trying to respond to her, but I stutter, so I can't. I'm going, I, I, she said, who do you know? in this neighborhood ever been on TV? I, 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 she said, who in the school ever been on TV? I, and I'm, I'm trying to say something, but she said, who in your family ever been on TV? I couldn't get it out. I was just trying to say, I, I, I heard Mohammed. I was trying to tell her the story. She said, and look at you standing there, you can't even talk. How they gonna put somebody like you on TV? So every year, I used to send her a flat screen TV. <laughs> Cause I didn't want her to miss me. Because lady, you dream killing. <laughs> this dream killing woman, man, who was supposed to be a teacher had destroyed me. She destroyed me. <laughs> and for years until she passed, I sent her a, a, a TV every year. Cause I didn't want her to miss me. <laughs> I sent her so many TVs she used to tell me, Baby, you could quit sending me TVs. I ain't got no one. I give the TVs to friends. Cool, let them watch me too. I mean, I mean everybody that said that, and I, I got all of that from a Muhammad Ali story because of that man and that guy. And we, when we got the exact same birthday, January 17th, we share birthdays. And the first time I met Muhammad Ali, I've, I've got, God has given me some great moments, man. I have a photo of the first time I met Muhammad Ali, and I have a picture of the first time I met Richard Pryor. And these, was, these are the only men that hang in my house, other than my father. They are the only men that hang in my house. 
I have expensive paintings of Pryor and I have expensive paintings of Ali. And I was at, uh, I was at the BET Awards and I was in the back and I was hosting and this woman came up to me and said, uh, excuse me, uh, Mohammed would like to see you. So I don't even know he's here. So it didn't, you know, Mohammed, Mohammed Akbar, Mohammed Baha, <laughs> Mohammed Kahi, who, who, Mohammed who? So she said, Mohammed wants to see you. And I went, yeah, ma'am, excuse me. She said, Mohammed wants to see you. And I said, ma'am, and I'm looking at her. I kind of recognize her, but I don't. And she said, you are Steve Harvey, aren't you? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, Muhammad Ali wants to see you. Now, I don't even know he's here. So I'm like, what? And so I follow her down this hallway, and this hallway's packed with people. And he walks in the room, and he says, everybody get out. My man, come here, give me a hug. I love you so much. I've been watching you. You're my favorite. I heard you used to do this thing. And man, let me tell you something. I cracked open like an Easter egg. <laughs> I, I mean, I was crying, man. Let me tell you something. B, I couldn't even talk to the dude. I was just crying, man. I was sobbing so hard. It, I couldn't even pull myself together. After all these years, I was in here because of something this dude said to me. And I couldn't even, I never even talked to him. Because, I kid you not, the picture was a picture of me crying. <laughs> I couldn't even, I never pulled it together. And I was trying, I said, I was just shaking his hand. I want to say, I love you. I tell you so much. He said, come here, man, let me tell you something. You's a badass dude, man. And, and some more tears. <laughs> so every time, I, and I never, all I told him was, you have no idea what you mean to me. And his daughter was there and said, Mr. Harvey, you don't know how many people meet my father and just start crying. You have no idea. So that's my Muhammad Ali story. I can imagine your father in heaven and the, mo the moment you had to have. But, but think about it like this, though, B. Your daddy raised you in a way where you were able to give him that moment. You can't give him that moment you ain't got no money. If that ain't happening, partner. You got to have money to make something happen. You know, I, I know people don't like talking about money, but that's usually, people don't like talking about money. People don't have any. I found that to be the case. But because I've had no money and money, it's way better with money. I, I'm just telling you, I don't know what you've heard about it, but it, the more of it you get, it don't make you happy or nothing. But I, I learned this about money. Money turns all emergencies into mere inconveniences. That's all it does. It takes all emergencies and turns them into mere inconveniences. And that's really all I use money for, is so I can just create some conveniences out of stuff there. And you had an emergency. But because God made you who he is and your daddy poured in you what he poured in you, you, you could have bought that plot, some more plots, you could have bought statues, you could have bought out that section, you can open up a V section, because they got a U section, you could open up a V section because you got that type of money. But you got that because of what your daddy poured into you, man. You do. So that's my Muhammad Ali story.